Jesus was wandering in the wilderness right after his baptism. And suddenly he saw an old man walking toward him. What are you doing here, said the old man. Well, I'm looking for my father, replied Jesus. Well, this is interesting, says the old man, because I, I'm looking for my son. Hmm. Well, I said my father, but he's not really my biological father, you know, said Jesus. Well, this is interesting, because my son is also not my biological son. And the old man continued, how would you describe the one you're looking for? Well, he's often represented as an old man with facial white hair. And what about you? Can you name a characteristic of your son? Well, he has nails and his hands and his feet. And at this moment, Jesus bursts and says, Father! And the man says, Pinocchio! I decided to begin this sermon with an old joke because I feel that we know the setting of today's uh, reading from the gospel according to Matthew maybe a little too well, that sometimes we tune out. If each Transfiguration Sunday is about the time Jesus shined at the top of a mountain, Land always begin with the story of Jesus being led into the wilderness. And every year, astute ministers always draw a parallel between those 40 days and the 40 days and night the prophet Elijah journeyed in the wilderness, or the 40 years Moses and the Israelites spent in the desert on their way to the promised land. And they will remind everyone that when Jesus was famished, physically exhausted, vulnerable, and alone, the tempter showed up. The tempter, the devil, the serpent, Satan. Pick your favorite personification of evil forces. And after a rap battle of obscure biblical passage, Jesus emerged victorious. He did not fall into sin. He turned down the temptation of personal wealth and power. He chose to remain on God's side. Hallelujah. Every year, ministers and Christians of all sorts tend to reduce today's story to a lesson about facing temptation, especially in the area of private morality. For too many, the whole point of the season of Lent seems to find something to give up. Oh, this year I will resist the temptation to swear or eat chocolate. I will not watch TV or go on Facebook. I will refrain from drinking, having intercourse, or doing drugs. We make those sort, all sorts of statements as if we were completely powerless over those substances and behavior, as we hope that God would magically intervene in our lives and become some sort of coping mechanism. We believe that renouncing something easily accessible in our society of abundance can make us a better person. And during Lent, we're usually told that we ought to sit in our hungers, our wants, our desires, because it's a time for cleansing. We ought to find a way to atone for our past sins. We ought to suffer for 40 days, as Jesus did. And all those acts of denials, of sacrifice, of privation are sometimes even turned into a, a public performance, I would say. Some does not only refrain from eating meat during Lent, for example. They have to make sure that everybody knows about it. 
It's almost as if we're boasting or trying to establish or religious superiority over others. We come to believe that the more we are tempted, the closer we are to Jesus, our ultimate model when it comes to resist sinful ways. And, and when I look at this traditional understanding of land, I'm often wondering why are we doing this? What are we trying to attempt? Are we feeding our hubris, our ego, our sense of worth? Do we want to prove something to God with our self-imposed sacrifice? Why are we turning legitimate human desires into immoral conducts? Because the longing for food that tastes good, intimacy, a, a few moments of leisure in our week, or the love of others, is not a sin in itself. To have ambition, to want to improve ourselves, to, to desire the best for our children and grandchildren is not necessarily wrong. It's like in... The other text in the lectionary for this week, it's from the book of Genesis. The whole concept of original sin and, and the fall of humanity has been developed about the fact that the story when Eve and Adam have tasted the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's interesting because the capacity of making by ourselves decision and to know the difference between what is right and what is wrong is considered a sign of maturity, not a sin. When it's time to make important decision, knowledge is considered to be essential, not a sin. However, like I said a couple weeks ago, it's always easier to do the strict minimum by following blindly a pre-established list. Do not eat that fruit. Do not turn rocks into bread. Do not smoke. Do not curse. And do not do this single little thing in your life and everything will be okay. Instead of reflecting on our own faith journey and discerning maybe areas that need to be improved, we are told to simply say no to the tempter. But what if, what if the point of this old story of Jesus in the wilderness is not about temptation, but compromises? Shortcuts, questionable decision made to increase one's visibility, recognition, admiration, fame. Alone in the desert, Jesus was confronted to a series of choices. And he had to find solutions while remaining true to himself. In, in, in the same way, you, me, everyone face the same reality every day. Sometimes we're hungry, frustrated. We're tired, annoyed, distraught. And we see opportunities and circumstances that could favor us. And we have to decide which road we want to follow. And unfortunately, too often, most of us make the wrong decisions because, why? Why? Because we're afraid of losing our assets. We are nostalgic of a time when the church was a powerful organization in our society. We were arrogant and believe we can exploit nature to our own satisfaction without ceasing. We are power thirsty and we convince 
ourselves that the ends justify the means. We were self-centered and overlook the hardship we cause to others. Too often we make the wrong choices because we conveniently forget our values and our faith when we're facing tough situations. And, and maybe the worst part in all of this is that most often, deep down ourselves, we know exactly what we should do. Because I would like to assume you, me, everyone, has a solid understanding of the difference between right and wrong. And yet, we're still making bad decisions for ourselves and for our world. We know our collective consumption of resources has reached an unsustainable rate. We willingly buy and eat unhealthy food. Willingly. We do not sleep off enough hours. We take the car to cross the street. We refuse to ask help when we struggle. We spend our money on what does not satisfy. We cling to a past that will never come back. In all those cases, we cannot blame the devil or anyone else. These are our choices, even the most self-destructive ones. So maybe instead of considering the coming weeks as a time of penance and privation, we can see them as an opportunity for regeneration. We can seize this moment to, to wake up and remember who we are and where we stand. We can identify those values that should never be negotiable. We can choose to remain true to ourselves. During this time of land, we have this opportunity to really be generous with our talent and our resources. We can make an extra effort to protect God's creation. We can show courage by welcoming in our midst those who are different than us. We can, <coughs> sorry, we can celebrate what is difficult to celebrate, we can even dare to promote reconciliation between nations, even if it's difficult these days. For land, we can do more than instead of doing less. Most, and most likely, people will not notice our effort. Our lives will not become easier by doing more. We will not become famous. Nevertheless, we will have the assurance that we have followed our values, our faith, without compromises. On this first Sunday in Lent, we follow Jesus into the wilderness. And over there, he might not have found his father but I believe it discovered his true self. When pushed to the limit and co confronted to difficult choices, Jesus affirmed who he is and how he will live his calling. Let us use this time to walk into Jesus' footstep, to reaffirm our identity, to be who we are. Thanks be to God, and amen.